Hello and welcome to a very special program. We are at the Serum Institute of India here in Pune. This is where Covi Shield is manufactured at a rate of production which is absolutely incredible. Adar Punawala with us. What are you going to show us over here, Adar? Uh, nice to have you here, Vishnu. Uh, this is the one of the production facilities where Covi Shield is being is being manufactured. So uh, let's go in and have a look. All right, let's take a look. Gear on, you've got the head gear on. Well, we're inside the final area where this Covi Shield is labeled, it's put in boxes, and it's distributed. And this is where the beginning of the end of the process, which ultimately results in people being administered the vaccine, starts out. And it's an interesting process. We've got Adar Punawala with us. So this is what you'd actually been waiting for such a long time, to see this happening, to see these being shipped out. Yes, Vishnu, this is the final product. As uh, we've been discussing the quality and how it's filled and packed, this is the final stage where it's being labeled yep. uh, over here on this automated line. And um, now it's going to be put in these boxes, uh, packaged with uh, cold dogs and cold packs, yep. maintain the temperature. Yeah. And then it will be dispatched out in the yep. refrigerated bag. And this is interesting, isn't it? I mean, this is where in these trays you've got one tiny batch. You keep talking about batches, right? And then it's going to be boxed as well. Yes. And this could end up anywhere in the world. Yes, you know, um, we've got uh, supplies going out in the next uh, two to three weeks uh, to almost, I think, um, about uh, 30 countries. Right. Um, you know, by the end of January, early February. Um, we're just, we've just delayed that. Uh, to ensure that uh, the country in India, our country gets all the priority and enough vaccines. And as soon as that, as you know, the rollout is imminent now. Uh, the trucks have already left yep. their premises now. And uh, so it's all, all yep. working out uh, on time. I just want to hold this up to camera once again because there is so much interest in this one tiny uh, vial, right? And this is what it's all about. This is what India has been waiting for, right? Each of these has what, 10 doses, right? That's right. Each of these has 10 doses. So you can inoculate uh, 10 people, uh, 10 patients. The only point here is that, you know, you, once you open the vial, you have to use it up in three to four hours. Right. Uh, because of hygiene and puncturing the vial and keeping it uh, open. Because if you have a look over here, Once you uh, get rid of this seal, you have a rubber rubber top. When a needle penetrates that, it leaves a tiny gap. So that gap could result in contamination if you leave it open. Um, you know, so three to four hours. Three to four hours is generally more than enough time. I mean, the way the vaccine is going to be used within half an hour or one hour, you're probably going to consume 10 doses in a vial. So let's talk about numbers, because I think that's uh, one of the most fascinating parts of serum. You know, this is a process that's going on constantly. It's been going on for several hours. It'll keep going on perhaps for months. But the scale is, uh, is incredible, right? 500, no, 5,000 doses every minute. Yes. Right? 5,000 doses of Kobe Shield. How do you manage that? Every minute. <laughs> All those large production lines, uh, which are automated now, um, can uh, produce uh, and fill 500 vials per minute. And since there are 10 doses in a vial, uh, you get an output of 5,000. Now, we've got three shifts going, working around the clock to do that. Um, and that's why we can get those numbers out. Uh, of course, the next challenge is storing so much of that material, which you'll have a look at also, and dispatching it. Those are now the challenges uh, ahead of us. You know, there's one thing we haven't spoken about, and that's so important. This is just a normal air-conditioned facility we are in. And had it been uh, some of the other drugs, it wouldn't have been like this. It would have been much more difficult. It's easy to handle this. Absolutely. You know, that's one of the reasons why we have partnered with some of the firms that we have, uh, AstraZeneca, Novavax, Oxford, all of these, because uh, the vaccine can be stored and handled in plus two to eight. 
if this was uh, one of the other facilities where you have to handle and keep the vaccine in minus 20 or minus 70 temperatures, super cold temperatures, that would have been very, very difficult. Mm. And that does slow down mm. the production a lot as well. I just want to ask you about what we were discussing earlier, numbers and the scale. Um, compared to, say, the United States, what you have over here is many times as much. And it's all ready and it's done, right? On a daily basis almost. Yes. So, I mean, um, we dispatched about 11 million doses in a day, um, you know, to roll out uh, in India at the moment. And we'll probably end up supplying 40 to 50 million doses over the next two months. Um, the U.S., I think, is has uh, reached that figure over a month and a half. Yeah. Uh, something that we're able to do here in three to four days. So that just shows India's capability uh, in, in doing so. And there are many other Indian vaccine manufacturers as well that can do that. So it's a great moment for India to be able to handle this at scale. Your, um, the, the numbers required in India are obviously huge. But given the pace of manufacture over here, even if you export, the supply to India will not be affected, will it? Absolutely right. In fact, uh, you know, uh, we've uh, explained that to the government and reassured the Indian public as well that uh, the India supplies will not be at the cost of exports. There'll be plenty of uh, vaccine to go around uh, for everybody. All right. Let's just move to this uh, last area. Um, and uh, this is this is what's being shipped out, right, yes. all across so India. Got, this is what we have a box of 50. So you've got 10 vials here in each of these smaller boxes. Yeah. You know, and... Um, and there are instructions as well, which I noticed yes. were being uh, put if into each of these boxes. Of what, 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 what are those instructions? I mean, well, is it anything there extraordinary? there directions to you, uh, use. Uh, it also sort of uh, uh, guides people on what could happen, what could be the possible reactions. You should be aware, um, you know. So you've got uh, this in different languages. You've got uh, a lot of the data from the clinical trial results also on the efficacy. So there's actually a lot of information here for people who want to know, um, you know, how it should be stored, used, um, even for patients. Um, and as you can see, there's the all different languages here because it's going to go to so many different countries. So here, if you look at uh, recommendations for use in pregnant women or women who have just delivered children, um, you know, and other guidelines. So it's almost like an FAQ and uh, so many other things that uh, a lot of people want to know. But, right. you know, it's all re available ready in one place. Right. And this will go out with every every vial. So right. everybody knows what they're getting into and uh, there's as much information out there as possible. I must ask you, given this rate of manufacture, why can't we buy it um, as opposed to waiting for the government to supply it to us? That's a very good question. Um, the government has decided to first immunize all the healthcare workers, uh, people with medical conditions, the elderly, you know, the most vulnerable. Yeah, 30 crores, and as yeah. soon as that is done in a month or two, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully less than that, mm -hmm. um, they will give us the permissions to uh, go ahead and uh, uh, offer it for private hospital sales in private markets. Thousand rupees, right? Yes, that's going to be the MRP. Of course, we'll probably get about half of that because... The rest goes into the distribution chain. A thousand a single dose, right? So two thousand for the entire course. Yes, yes. But again, as I said, um, if we wait for two and a half to three months, we get an efficacy of more than eighty percent. Even that is explained in this leaflet. How does that work? Well, because all vaccines, as you know, the longer you wait between the first shot and the second shot, um, and the booster effect, you need to get your allow your body to recover and uh, not have cross-reactogenicity from the first and the second shot. So that's why um, we found even in the Oxford trial overseas that the, there were two different efficacy results. Yes, you exactly. So um, you got that also publicly stated from Pascal, the CEO of AstraZeneca, who said that if you wait for at least two and a half to three months after the first dose, the efficacy is more than 80%. But right now it's going to be 28 days between doses, right? No, no. The recommendation is 4 to 12 weeks. So depending on what you're comfortable with, you know, some people, if they're traveling abroad or have other plans, they may want to take the second shot, be done with it and move on. We're leaving that choice. We're leaving that choice to the... Uh, no, but this is interesting because yeah. the government is looking at 28 days, right? For the 30 crores. No, no. no. Between the, they're not. They're not. No, no. Oh. Uh, they will go by the guidelines in the packaging insert and what 
we have explained to them, and it's optional. So uh, the minimum is 28 days. Yes, the minimum oh. is 28. The minimum is 28 days, and the optimum now uh, sort of optimum is yes. what? Correct. Is three, three months. months. Yes. Three months. Yes. And if the second dose was delivered at three months, you could see upwards of 80% efficacy. Absolutely. And that's proven in the In fact, upwards trial. of 90%. No, 80%. Upwards of 80%. And as the final data with more patients comes in, maybe that figure can be revised, you know, going toward 90 and above. But we're very confident in saying it's more than 80% if you wait for three months. Right. For, for a lot of people wondering when they eventually get around to buying this drug, how would that happen? They go to the chemist, pick it up, go to the doctor and get it injected or you yeah. can't do that, right? No, so no. I'll, I'll explain that. Uh, we're using the private sector, uh, corporates, private hospitals and other avenues like that where, you know, for example, a large corporate could buy using their CSR funds hmm. or whatever hmm. um, vaccines for not only their employees but also uh, for the family members. Right. So, you know, you're covering a large amount mm. there. Then mm. you've got private hospitals mm. in other areas mm. um, uh, and other avenues. There'll be NGOs and other mm. organizations. Mm. And, of course, eventually, after March or April, uh, it'll be available in every chemist and, 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 and you know, mm. retail chain. Mm. So you could just walk into a shop, buy it, mm. or you, mm. you go to your doctor, mm. and they have, you know, the tie-ups with mm. the stockists and all, mm. so mm. they get the vaccines that mm. way. another facility that we are in right now, Adar, what is this? What are we going to see here? So this is the bulk manufacturing uh, that we're doing at scale. The COVID-19 vaccine, hmm. uh, Covishield at the moment is being uh, manufactured here and then will be filled and labeled as hmm. you saw hmm. um, or you will see. Hmm. Right over here, hmm. um, you can see an automated, all the automated machinery that is uh, uh, come from a company, in fact, uh, called Biozine from India. Um, you know, you have different uh, companies providing all these automated. So th this is the Indian components over here as yes, well, in, yes, in terms of the yes. machinery. Then you've got mm. going uh, over there. If you go in the back, yeah. Uh, you know, that's a German brand. So you've mm. got a mix of uh, mm. European huh. and Indian machinery here, huh. um, and you see, you can see all the people here. A fully gowned, we can't unfortunately enter there. Right. But uh, you can get a good idea of what's happening here. Right. Uh, I wanted to ask you about costs because yes. uh, after the first 100 million doses, you expect uh, some sort of renegotiation, right? How's that? Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, you know, we decided in the time of the pandemic to support the government. Uh, in fact, uh, the 200 rupee price we've offered is uh, uh, actually uh, substantially below mm -hmm. uh, the figures that uh, you know we wanted to offer as a pricing uh, in terms of cost mm -hmm. because uh, the costing will change as economies of scales pick up. Right. At the moment the cost is upwards of 300 rupees. Mm -hmm. We've given this as a very special price mm -hmm. um, to the government so that we can roll it out early and um, make sure all the vulnerable people are protected. Right. And we'll make up uh, our profits and uh, returns on the capital investments and OPEX later on when we enter into the private market. So that's where you would get your ultimate profit margin uh, from. So yes. the private market is important and your exports. Yes, right? absolutely. And would you uh, get into any renegotiation potentially with the government after the first 100 million doses? Well, I think uh, it's not about negotiation. Uh, you know, we've just offered a very reasonable price and as long as it's the lowest globally that's being offered three to four dollars, something in that ballpark range, uh, I'm sure uh, it's going to be okay and they have the budgets to do it. So, you know, um, it's all looking uh, smooth sailing from here on. Right. And you believe that all of the vaccines which come into India need to be broadly similarly priced. There is an ec a principal equity here. That can't really be, right? If Pfizer comes here, they cannot sell it 200 rupees. Well, um, I, I hope not because, you know, uh, it's only from the angle of, uh, and I don't want to comment on, you know, other companies and what they should do. Right. But, the only point here is that we'd be able to vaccinate that many more people um, and uh, have the, the coverage going up, obviously, if the prices are, are lower uh, based on the budgets that we have and the, the huge population that we need to cover. 
um, that's all I will say and that's obvious. So yeah. I hope that uh, the manufacturers and foreign manufacturers can lower their prices for countries like India which have a huge disease burden in terms of uh, you know in the population to cover and also that will help the, the, yeah. the budgets for, for, yeah. our, for our country. Yeah. Let's talk about Novavax a little bit now. Nasal, right? No, uh, no, no it's not, not nasal. nasal. What's the nasal it's one? The Norigenics. And that's also something you're looking at, right? That, that will be licensed in a year because that's uh, starting phase one trials in the UK uh, at the end of this month. The Novavax uh, product is on a, on a, is a protein-based uh, subunit protein vaccine mm. and with a very powerful adjuvant, mm. which will also give a good long-term response. And we have plans of scaling that up by May, June of this year and launching it you know, in the next uh, six months. So you have region trials on as well about yes. that? That's not started yet? No, that will start in India in the next month or two. And how big would those trials be? Again, similar size, uh, similar size to what we did for the Oxford AstraZeneca product uh, because, you know, they're doing very large phase three studies overseas. Um, we will do efficacy studies for some of our Indian, uh, uh, indigenous, indigenously developed vaccines right. later on, like uh, the RBD one also, which we've got in partnership with the... So Spy how many do you have now? I mean, four in total. We're not going to take on any more because then we've got our hands full, hands full already. So, so when would you know efficacy of, uh, of Novavax? When? Uh, end of January, early February. That's when they're unblinding the global uh, trials, so within a month from today. And uh, as I said, based on that, we'll do a bridging study and we'll be ready in May, June of this year with a licensed product. And how much would that cost? Oh, that's going to probably be uh, double the price of the Oxford AstraZeneca product. We're going to export that to the higher income countries. Uh, because this Oxford product will take care of the lower income countries and split it that way. And it will be available in India as well? Um, we'll see if it is and if it's required to be available because you know we don't need to launch multiple vaccines in India. Um, we need to cover different parts of the globe and if the Oxford Ast AstraZeneca vaccine has got a high efficacy and working well, we probably don't need to launch that one in India right now, maybe in a year's time. What about the other two? The nasal one was Cotogenics was interesting. We've spoken about it yeah, earlier. It's interesting because it's a live attenuated vaccine. It's um, easy to administer. Uh, yes, nasal again uh, is very easy to administer and will be probably a one-shot vaccine uh, with a very long-term immune response uh, that we, we feel that uh, it will have because all the live attenuated vaccines are generally more powerful in terms of getting an immune response. And when did you say the end of the year, right? Yeah, I mean, I would say first quarter 2022. Right. Is when that, that's the last vaccine that we're going to license. Right. So um, that's what, that's the last. Novavax is, uh, is after the, yeah. this one, Covishield. And, and then, then what's quarter, in between? quarter three is what we're expecting the RBD candidate, which is uh, based on the hepatitis B protein, which has the COVID-19. Where is that being developed? That is, you know, in partnership with Spy Biotech, it's a, a spin-off group of the Oxford scientists. I see. And um, we're doing that in partnership with them. And again, would that be potentially sold in India? Yes, again, possibly, uh, if, if required, because, you know, we've got so much capacity of the Oxford AstraZeneca one, it probably wouldn't make sense to launch multiple vaccines in India. Um, this would, again, help uh, uh, other parts of the world. And, you know, they, well, this vaccine could be launched in India for the younger population okay because this vaccine will probably be the safest one to also give under 18 you know going all the way down to the age of four so that's what we're uh, planning to do with this one so yes it'll have a unique uh, uh, advantage not to say that the Oxford AstraZeneca can't be given to children and young adults um, but you know we still have to do the trials for that right to right. see that it's safe right to give it to and how much would this cost um, again this would be also reasonable do we have a name for it no as yet. Uh, not yet. Okay. It's still under development, so we'll assign a brand name for it soon. And this will be in the same ballpark as, yes, uh, as yes, this. Yes. All right. So exciting times for right vaccines. Yes. One of these are one is already out, and it's it's great, isn't it? Sixteenth is the date. You've been waiting for this for a long time. Um, is that when you're going to get your shot as well, or or how is it going to work for you? Well, I'll post my uh, picture of my shot and video uh, very soon. Um, uh, we were just waiting for the appropriate protocols to be followed. Um, so maybe tomorrow or the day after. All right. Tomorrow or day after, that's when Arthur gets uh, his dose. But 
Uh, it's going to be out distributed across the country sooner than later on the 16th onwards. And this brings a great deal of hope. 2020 has been disastrous for people all around the world. Hopefully that sense of hope in 2021 will mean more people will have their lives saved.